Hello everybody and welcome to another tutorial of mine for Isle 2 Sturm with Cliffs of Dover. This time I'm going to cover the very basics of the multiplayer. Um, the reason for that is that many newer pilots have issues actually getting into the multiplayer, picking an aircraft and getting into the action. And I can't blame them because I had my troubles uh, when I converted over from the old Isle to into Cliffs of Dover because um, there were so many changes in the way how multiplayer works from the old Isle to, to Cliffs of Dover. So I think it's worthwhile actually making a video on how this actually works and how you go about getting into an aircraft. So, of course, you have to start up the game. Uh, you have your choice multiplayer here and gives you three choices here but for the Joe average pilot all you need to worry about is search a server so we click on that and it puts us into the server browser so we have a list of available servers on the internet uh, you can sort these by name map name player number and ping and um, there are three different ways you can actually refresh this server list. One is by hitting refresh and this will uh, only update the player number and ping. But if you want to get a completely new list to um, have a look if more servers popped up in the meanwhile, you can click new list and it's going to fetch a completely new one. Um, sometimes for whatever reason uh, this just won't work and what you can do then is just go back to the main menu and go into the server browser again the same way we just did so then the next step is to actually choose a server I'm going to select a tag here and once you click on one of those servers it's going to give you all sorts of information on the right hand side uh, this information is actually provided by the person running the server and while setting it up. So what we can see here is for example the IP address of the server. We get additional information such as the home page for the particular server and we also have a TeamSpeak 3 address here. By the way, I, if you have a, a microphone and you're not too timid uh, to talk to other people on the internet then r you should really really install TeamSpeak and get on the uh, TeamSpeak server of the respective server you're playing on simply because it's so much more easygoing and s uh, much much quicker than actually typing into the chat which is um, just going to distract you from flying uh, and especially if you have an enemy on your six and uh, you have to evade his attacks. You don't have any time to uh, write in the, in the chat because you've got better things to do. And with voice communication, this is not a problem at all. So on top of these informations here, we also get a player list, which we also can sort by player name, score, and time played on the server. Um, this is not really that important. Um, we also get here this realism button and if we click on that uh, we get a, s a list of realism settings enabled by the server and as you can see here uh, it's a fairly high realism server well a full real server at that um, we have things enabled such as limited ammo and fuel of course we have no external views and we have complex engine management um, so the next thing would be to actually join the server and this can be done by two ways either you select the server and uh, click the join server button or you just pick the server and double click on it I usually just double click on the server because it's uh, faster and once you've done that it's going to connect to the server it's going to download the mission file and the game will now begin to load the mission.
Okay, so I don't know if this is going to show up on the video because it's pretty much an overlay, but uh, usually what you get these days on Attic is a sort of welcome screen with TeamSpeak address and the forum address. You can just click on that, click on continue and it's going to disappear. And then we are actually looking at the map screen, which is the core part of the multiplayer uh, spawning screen. Uh, first thing to do is actually choose an army. You have two flags here, one for the RAF, so the British side, and one for the Germans and uh, Italians. I'm I'm an avid uh, Luftwaffe flyer, so I pick blue here. Uh, it also displays the player numbers here, so we have 21 uh, red guys, as they are usually called, and 19 blues. Uh, and what this also does when you click on the flags is it actually shows a list of people and their aircraft currently flying. So you, so you see the player names here on the right hand side and what aircraft they are flying. So um, then what you also can check out after you've selected an army is go to the briefing screen. This is only available when you've actually picked a side. Um, and especially if you're a newcomer and you, don't, you haven't flown on the server yet or in a particular mission, it's always advisable to actually check out the briefing and have a look at what's actually um, the objective of the map. For example, here we have the uh, Operation Relinquish map, which plays all around here. We have sort of uh, an allied bridgehead still here, the last remnants of allied opposition in France. We have the Germans advancing from the east. Um, and as we pick the German side we see all sorts of targets that we can attack as a Luftwaffe or Italian or a Regia Aeronautica pilot. So now we actually want to spawn into an aircraft. So how do we do that? Well, first thing is to zoom a little bit in, usually onto the front line, which is where all the action takes place. And as you can see here, you have certain airfields um, marked with these kind of symbols with an aircraft on them. And there's two types of them. Uh, these grayed out ones and the white ones. The grayed out ones are inactive, you can't spawn from there. So we have to pick one with a white symbol. You click on that and it's going to show a red outline when it's selected and the right hand side will change showing an aircraft icon, a create button etc etc. So currently it's showing a BF-110 C4 as choice. Um, so what if we don't want to fly this particular aircraft to actually do any changes to the loadout? What we do is we actually double click uh, on the aircraft and then it's going to pick us, uh, put us into this uh, window here. Um, you can actually move the aircraft around if you click on it, hold down the left mouse key and then just drag the mouse around. So changing the aircraft you have to click on the aircraft name up above here and we are going we are going to see a selection of aircraft here that we can choose from from 109s 110s to even the field g50 so what i'm going to choose now is the e3b which is the fighter bomber version of the 109e3 because it uh, has the added choice of a bomb rack and a bomb to actually show off. Um, what's also interesting here on the right hand side is you can actually choose um, the type of your markings. So um, if you want to have sort of like fighter bomber markings, you pick these. If you want to have a fighter marking on your aircraft, you pick this one. Uh, you can also choose um, a particular squadron which is going to change the squadron emblem displayed on the side of the aircraft. For example, 
uh, here this red cat and now we have the symbol of the first staffel Jagdgeschwader 52 um, and you can also pick different staffeln so we have the Stab staffel we have the first second and the third. What this is going to do is mostly, for the most part, change the color of the number back here. And this is not uniform, um, this actually depends on the squadron you chose. So not every squadron has the same colors for each uh, of the flights. Uh, you can also change the paint scheme here, so this is basically the skin put on the aircraft. Um, the call sign is pretty much useless. You can choose whatever you want, but it's not going to have any impact on anything. Those art is useless for uh, German aircraft, and you can select a tail number here. So you can put anything you want into this. I'm to white 5 in JG4, so I'm going with that. Uh, you can also change the visual weathering on your aircraft, so if you like your aircraft particularly dirty, move the slider to the right. If you like it clean and neat, put it on the left hand side. So we've picked our aircraft of choice, how do we actually select the loadout for it? We go here, loadout, and the first thing, if you've never done this before, is I would recommend you actually go ahead and s save a customized loadout with any name you want. So just put in ent any name you want for your loadout. I've actually done that already for this uh, machine. I've called it angepasst, which means customized in German. And it seems that my customized loadout is for a pure fighter version because it doesn't have a bomb rack installed. By the way, here for the fighter bomber version, only the fighter bomber versions have this line. Or the ordinary fighter versions only get the nose guns and wing guns here. But for the fighter bom bomber versions, you get a number of choices here. And only three of these five are actually of any use. Um, never ever ever pick this one or this one because this is just going to add a bomb rack on your aircraft without a bomb so you've got additional weight additional drag but no bomb so it's it's just useless you know just um, it's like shooting your own foot so I either choose empty or bomb rack with bombs you either get the choice of four SC-50 bombs or a single two SC-250 bomb. So for example, I'm going to take an SC-250 bomb here. Um, by the way, if you change anything here, what's going to happen is it's going to show an asterisk here. And this means that the changes to your loadout have not been saved. Um, and for this to be saved, you have to just press save here. The asterisk is going to disappear and it's saved for future use. So I'm going to take an SC250 here, click on save. Um, what you can also do here is adjust the fuel value. So from 0 to 100%. Um, I would never use 100% unless you're really, really sure you are going to need that amount of fuel. Usually for most engagements 70% 70, 70 is just enough. 100% um, you can fly a long, long while and most people won't ever need to use as much fuel. So we have chosen a bomb and our fuel state. Uh, next thing to do, or another thing we can do, is actually pick a belting for our onboard weapons. So, we have here a listing of all our weapons, four in total on all of the 109s. 
Uh, as we have the 109E3, we have two machine guns and two 20mm cannons. This right here is the current belting uh, for our machine guns. First machine gun, which is the left one above the engine. Um, here is a list of available ammunition for the machine gun, and you can just put it in uh, the way you like. I currently have it set up like this. We I have five uh, armor piercing rounds with tracer, white tracer, and five rounds armor piercing incendiary. And I have the same one for the same loadout for the second gun, just inverted. So whenever this gun is firing armor piercing tracer, the other gun is firing armor piercing incendiary, and vice versa. Um, you can also change the convergence here for the machine guns as they are centrally mounted. Uh, the horizontal convergence is pretty much uh, nonsense. So I use a convergence of 400-400 for all of my uh, center mounted weapons. And for the cannons I set the horizontal convergence down to 150. And this is a my loadout for the MGFF, which is the same on both cannons, by the way, and not inverted, unlike the uh, machine guns. And of course, whenever you do any changes here, you also have to press save here. Uh, when you've never done any changes to the uh, gun belting, when you press save, it's going to ask you to save a customized uh, belting, like with the weapon set. So you just put in a name, press save, and that's that. Um, then last but not least, as we are flying the fighter bomber version, uh, we have this bombs tab here. And this is really, really important. A lot of people, uh, especially the new pilots, um, get in a perfect bombing run and are frustrated because their bombs won't detonate and this is this can be because of two things either you forgot to arm the bombs in flight uh, which <laughs> really really sucks or you forgot to set the proper uh, bomb fuse and the 109 has two different bombs the SC50 50 kg bomb and the SC250 kg bomb and for both of these bombs you have three or two uh, fuses. Yeah, for the for the smaller bomb, you get two fuses: a high altitude fuse and a low level fuse. And the SC250 has a low level, high altitude, and dive bombing fuse. But whenever possible, with any bomb, regardless of type, I suggest, I really, really suggest you take the low level fuse, no matter what, because. Uh, you are much more flexible with that because the high altitude fuse takes some time to actually arm the bomb. So if you're flying in a 109 E3B, you're most likely going to come in at a very, a very low altitude towards the target. And flying below 1000 meters is not going to give the bomb enough time to actually arm. So it's just going to uh, fall into the target and do absolutely nothing. So you have to choose low level. This is going to arm no matter how high you are. So if whether you're flying at 5,000 meters or 5 meters, you just throw this thing, don't forget to arm first, and this is going to explode after 14 seconds, as displayed here. Auto automatic dive fuse delay of 14. So after the bomb has actually slapped into the target, it, it's going to take 14 seconds and it's going to explode. You can actually um, set up a charging delay here as well, but you should, I would suggest you, you, know, you keep this at zero. Just doesn't make any sense increasing this. So you do that for both bombs, setting this up to low level and zero seconds delay, and as always, save. This is, I've already uh, saved the customized uh, loadout, so um, there is no context asking me about saving a loadout, but if you 
do this for the first time. There's going to be another win window here asking for a name for the loadout, etc. So you save that, you check if your belting is still saved, you choose your customized loadout, save that, and then you are ready to fly. So the airfield is still uh, selected, and what you do now to actually get into the aircraft is simply hit the create button. This is going to s put you into the cockpit of your aircraft. So that's it about flying aircraft, uh, or actually spawning into aircraft. Um, another thing that has been introduced with Team Fusion 4.0 is the possibility of actually spawning into tanks and anti-aircraft cannons and a lot of people uh, ask how that is done so before even thinking about going into the flak guns or a tank is to actually spawn into an aircraft you have to spawn into an aircraft first then you go back to this um, briefing screen by hitting escape uh, and then you click here on this drop down menu and you can actually see here tanks artillery so uh, there are no tanks I think on this map so it's not showing anything here but on a map with tanks you would see a list of vehicles and you just pick one double click on it and it's going to set you in uh, into the, the vehicle same for the entire aircraft guns. This is going to show you a list here with guns available uh, in the surrounding of your airfield. Um, then you pick a gun, double click on it and it's going to spawn you into the gun. And a third thing is you can of course also in multiplayer man uh, crew positions in bombers or multi-crew aircraft such as the 110. So this again works similarly to the um, anti-aircraft guns and the tanks. You actually uh, have to spawn into an aircraft first. You go back to this menu here, you select aircraft and then it's, you have a look at this uh, list and it's going to show you for example U88A1 pilot and a username and then below it's going to show you UET8A1 Bombardier Gunner 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 and you choose one of those crew positions you double click and it's going to put you right into that position so that's about it everything you need to know about spawning in on to Cliffs of the Wrath I hope this has been any help if there are any further questions don't hesitate asking in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video.